Hi, in this video, we're going to look at some properties of expected value, uh, and let's, let's do so through the use of an example. So let's look at this particular example. Let's say I got this uh, uh, discrete random variable. I've just got uh, three values in the support of the random variable, 400, 500, or 800, and their corresponding probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.3, uh, respectively. Now, I can calculate the expected value of the random variable that we've already talked about that. That's just the sum product. So you take each value in the support of the random variable and you multiply that times its associated probability and then you add them all up. So here I get 400 times 0 0.2 plus 500 times 0 0.5 uh, plus 800 times 0 0.3. Uh, and if I did the arithmetic right, I get, if I get 570 there. Okay, so uh, that's the... Uh, 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 that's the expected value, and I, I mentioned it earlier in, in a previous video. Uh, sometimes the expected value, it's, it's, it's also referred to as the mean, and when I think of it as the mean, I, I'll write mu. So mu equals uh, 570. It'd be the mean of the uh, expected value, uh, the mean of the random variable cap x. Okay, so now what if I tweak this example a little bit now and I ask, instead of calculating the expected value of cap x or just the mean of the random variable, what if I wanted something like the expected value of a, of a 2x plus 100? Okay, so now this is not, is not doing anything fancy here. All we're going to do is we're going to look at another table now. Instead of table values where the values in, are, are, are x values, now let's look t at a table where the values are 2x plus 100. So, uh, so when x is 400, I get a 2 times 400 plus 100. When x is 500, I get 2 times 500 plus 100. And when x is 800, I get 2 times 800 plus 100. And just doing the arithmetic, the first value, the 2 times 400, plus 100 is 900 and, and likewise the other values are 1100 and 1700. So now I just get a table whose values now are 900, 1100, and 1700 with corresponding probabilities of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.3. And so the expected value is again, it's just a sum product. So I take a 900 times 0 0.2, add to that an 1100 times 0 0.5, add to that a 1700 times 0 0.3, and my answer is going to be 1240. So that's it. That's how I would calculate something like an expected value of a 2x plus 100 uh, in this case. So now, let's break down the calculation a little bit more. So I'm going to do it using some colors here. So then where did the 900 come from? Well, the 900 came from the 2 times 400 plus 100. Likewise, you can see where the 1100 and the 1700 came from. Okay, so now let me get rid of the colors for just a second. And I want to, uh, let, let's, in this case, let's just expand the expression just a little bit. Uh, and so the, the, I'm going to distribute the 0.2 across, and I'm going to distribute the 0.5 across, and distribute the 0.3 across, and so forth. And then I'm going to regroup these values. Let's look at the values in red. Uh, if I look at those values in red, uh, or I look at the terms that are in red, each term has a 2 in it that I'm going to factor out. When I factor out the 2, I get a 2 times 400 times 0 0.2 plus 500 times 0 0.5 plus 800 times uh, times 0.3. And likewise, if I look at the other expressions in the line above, and I'll put those in green, every term in that, all the green terms have a 100, so I can factor a 100 out. And when I do, I get a 100 times the 0.2 uh, plus 0.5 plus 0.3. Okay, so now what I want to focus on is, is this factor that 2 is being multiplied by. The 400 times 0 0.2 plus 500 times 0 0.5 plus 800 times 0 0.3 and recognize that's just exactly the expected value of the random variable cap x that we did, uh, that was our first, uh, our first calculation. And the other thing I want to recognize is the 0.2 plus 0.5 plus 0.3 all add up to just a 1. That's adding up the probabilities, just the probabilities in the table. And so I'm just going to get a 1 when I add up the probabilities in a probability mass table. And so the, the second term is just going to be plus 100. And so my, my point here, let me kind of erase this, this stuff in the middle. My point here is that the expected value of a 2 times cap x plus 100 is 2 times the expected value of cap x uh, plus 100. And once I recognize that, let's uh, again make an observation. Expected value of cap x was, was 570. We did that first. That was kind of the easy thing to do. And then if I have a function of the random variable like this 2x plus 100, I could calculate that as 2 times the expected value of cap x, which was 570, 
and then plus the 100. And I got 1240 either way. And so the fact here that I'm pointing out is that if you have constants A and B, if you take an expression like a, a times cap X plus B and you take the expected value of that, it's the same as A times the expected value cap X and then plus B. So that's a fact, and I, I want you, there, there's, the, the fact follows from the expected value, and a, another word for expect value is expectation. The expectation being what's called a linear operator. You've seen these linear operators before. You might not have heard that term, that term linear operator, but you've seen them before. For instance, derivatives and integrals are also linear operators, and this expectation is a linear operator. And what that means uh, you know, uh, what follows from being an ex uh, an, a linear operator is that you can take a term by term expected value. So expectations can be, can be computed term by term. So when I have an expression like an A times a cap X plus B that I'm taking the expectation of, it's the same as the expectation of the first term, A times cap X, plus the expectation of the second term, which is a B. Okay, so that's, that's what I've done here with the term by term. Uh, uh, calculation. And the second thing that you can do from being a linear operator is that you can factor out uh, constants. And what I mean by that is if you look at the, uh, the, the a times cap x that I'm taking the expected value of, the a is a constant so I can factor that out. And, and the expected value of an a times cap x is just a times the expected value of cap x. And the final thing that I want to know, other thing that I want to notice is that when you have a constant, um, the expected value of a constant is whatever that constant is. Uh, remember, with random variables, you have, um, you know, you can look at like uh, the, you can think of the expected value as being the long long-term average of, of observations of the random variable. Well, if every observation is the same, then the long-term average is going to be whatever that value is. So the expected value of a constant is, is just going to be a constant. So I'm going to replace the expected value of, of B with just, just a B. Uh, so again, when you have constants A and B, the expected value of, a, uh, of an A times cap X plus B is A times the expected value of cap X plus B. And if you'll think about the, the properties of a linear operator and just recognize that the expected value or, the, or expectation is a linear operator, then this, this, this will be um, hopefully obvious. Uh, let's look at what's happening in the continuous case. So, uh, because there is something I want to point out here. In the continuous case, the expected value of the random variable is, an, is the integral over all the values in the support of the random variable of the product of, the, of, the, uh, of x times the density function. And what I want to point out here is a very important property of expected values, and that is that more generally, the expected value of any function of the random variable is an integral where the integrand is the function times the density that's associated to the random variable. And so if you look at what I've got in red here and you apply this to the function g of cap x equal to cap x, then you get the... the the line above it. You get the, uh, the formula for the expected value. Okay, so now let's apply it to this situation. Let's say that the function now is, uh, is an a times cap x plus b. So where I see the g of x, I'm going to put an a times cap x plus b. Uh, and so now my, my integral becomes an integral from minus infinity to infinity of a product of a times x plus b with the density function. And I can distribute the density function across, so that's what I'll do uh, now. And I know that the integral is a, is a linear operator, so I can integrate term by term, so that's what I'm going to do now. And I know that the linear integral is a linear operator, so I can factor out constants. So the a, uh, I'm going to factor out, I'll get an a times an integral of an x times the density function in the first case. Uh, so let me highlight that in red. And then I could factor the b out also, and I just get b times an integral of just the density function. So in red, if you look at what's in red, that's exactly the expected value of the random variable. And what's in green is I'm integrating the density function over the entire support of the random variable. And that's one of the first facts we talked about is, in fact, that's, that's one, of the pro, one of the ways we, we talked about defining the density function was defining in a, in a way that the area under the curve is one. In other words, the integral of uh, the density function 
uh, over the entire support of the random variable is just a one. And so uh, I, what's in green is just equal to a one and I'm, I'm left with my result that I get that the uh, expectation of an A times cap X plus B is just A times the expectation of cap X and then plus B. Okay, let's do one more example that's a little bit more uh, complicated, but it's one that you're gonna see in, in uh, upcoming videos, something similar to what you're gonna see anyway in upcoming vi videos. So let's say I've got this probability uh, table. I've got a, uh, the same random variable that I had throughout the, uh, the video here. But this time I want to compute the uh, expected value of the square of x minus 100. Now I think, I, I think if I saw that, I think the easiest thing, what I would probably do is it, I'm just looking at the square of the values of x, cap x minus 100. And so I create a new table where I have values of the square of cap x minus 100. So when I plug a 400 in, I get 400 minus 100 squared. And, and likewise, when I plug in a 500 and an 800, um, do the arithmetic, uh, you know, just what's in the parentheses. So my values in the table that I've, my new table are now just 300 squared, 400 squared, and 700 squared. And I have their probabilities, their associated probabilities. And when I take the expected value, then I just do a sum product with those, with those values in the, in the table. So it's 300 squared times 0.2, 400 squared times 0.5, and 700 squared times 0.3. Add all that together and I get 245,000. Uh, so that's probably what I would do, but there's another method that we could do using uh, some properties, properties of the expected value and, and a little algebra. So let's start with the x minus 100 squared, and let's use a little algebra to square out the cap x minus 100. And we would get cap x squared minus 200 times cap x, and then plus 100, uh, 100 squared, which is 10,000. And then the expected value is a linear operator, expectation is a linear operator, so I'm going to take a term-by-term -term expected value. And actually, not only did I take a term-by-term -term expected value in this, in this last line, I also, in the middle term, uh, when I had a 200 times cap x, I, I factored out the constant of 200. So I used uh, both properties of linear operators there, that you could take term-by-term -term expected values and you can factor out constants. I left the expected value of 10,000 there, but, but actually the expected value of 10,000 10, is not random. It's just a constant. Uh, and so what do I expect 10,000 to be equal to? 10,000. So, so, uh, so this is what I'm left with now. And in order to finish the calculation, I would need the first and second moments of the random variable cap x. So cap x has an expected value of a 400 times 0 0.2 plus 500 times 0 0.5 plus 800 times 0.3, do the arithmetic, that's for 570, we did that before. And now I need the second moment, and so the, the second moment of the random variable, uh, of course I gotta square the values of cap x before I take the sum product. So it's 400 squared, 500 squared, 800 squared, together with 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.3 as the sum product. And when I did that, I got 349,000 when I did that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, confident in my calculations because now when I plug in the numeric values for the first and second moments uh, and do the arithmetic, I get the same answer that I got before. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in my, in, my, in my numbers there. Okay, so uh, uh, good video on uh, properties of expected value and some, uh, some examples there. Uh, all right, I'll see you in the next video.